anger and defiance as Gazans mourn their dead. It's a scene that has become all too familiar, adding pain to what the UN calls an unlivable situation. Among the bodies being carried for one last time through the streets of Gaza, the one of Muhammad Abu Amr, an artist who took part in the so-called Great March of Return. His friends say his art won't be forgotten. In all, more than 1,400 people were injured, more than half of them shot by live ammunition, some suffocated by tear gas, the highest casualty rate in a single day in Gaza since the last war in 2014. Israel had prepared for this, sending reinforcements to the border area. The army had warned Gazans against approaching the border fence as a matter of national security. Now the military threatens that if the violence continues, it will escalate its response and go deeper into Gaza. Bus drivers received voice messages from the Israeli army advising them against moving people to the border area or else, as this voice says, they and their families will be held responsible. But Gazans, fed up and exhausted from life under siege, vow to continue protesting. Several tents were erected along the border. Thousands of people plan to camp there, many of them refugees who are demanding their right to return to the homes their families were evicted from generations ago. Ali Dardasawi still carries the key of his parents' house in Deir el Seba, now an Israeli town. I will keep it until we get back there and die there. If not me, my children will. I've been waiting for nearly 70 years and still nobody cares about us. I live under siege with not a single aspect of a decent life. About 68% of the population in Gaza are refugees. The protests will continue until May 15th, the day of the creation of the State of Israel. Palestinians refer to it as Nakba or catastrophe. Everyone on both sides is aware that the standoff can spin out out of control at any moment. Only 100 meters away from the fence, as you see, we can see the Israeli army snipers, we can see the Israeli army soldiers uh, in the jeeps and trying to target all the protesters that are being very close to the fence by live ammunition, rubber bullets and the tear gas canisters. Uh, they are using uh, new, updated and developed weapons. As you see, this is the tear gas by the drone, uh, by the Israeli army. Uh, they, throw the, they are using the drone to throw the tear gas canisters on the protesters. And this is like the tenth time they're using it from the, from, since the beginning of the day today. Here, here's a live injury uh, just right now from the tear gas canisters that were thrown on the protesters just right now. And as you see, everyone is trying to take this injury uh, to the ambulance to go to the hospital directly. For more on this, we go live now to Gaza, where Hind joins us. You just saw her reporting there. Uh, Hind, thank you so much for your brave reporting and for coming into the studio so late. Many are calling today's massacre unprecedented. Based on your experience covering demonstrations like this, would you agree with that characterization? Well, actually, no, because today Palestinians were protesting and armed and in the past weeks the Palestinian factions were calling that they don't want any violations or any violation escalating in the Gaza Strip especially during this um, during this um, protest today Palestinians were only demanding the right of return uh, the Palestinian refugees were demanding the right of return to their homeland and origins uh, Palestinians today were unarmed they had no weapons they had no tear gas canisters they had no uh, live ammunitions they had no bullets bullets so that's why I'm telling you today was a very tough day for all the Palestinians uh, all the protesters were in danger uh, all the uh, everyone every citizen in Gaza strip on the border today and uh, near the fence was in very danger uh, they were targeting everyone near the fence and uh, I say this again Palestinians were unarmed they no one was armed they were only going there holding one message that they're here because today is the anniversary mm. of the 42nd anniversary of mm -hmm. land aid to the Palestinians
And I gave a brief explanation of Land Day at the beginning of this broadcast, but can you elaborate on why this day is so significant for Palestinians, particularly why the issue of refugee right of return is special to the people of Gaza? Well, Palestinians, uh, today Palestinians uh, go back to no 1976 where six Arab, uh, Arab Israel citizens were killed by the Israeli army uh, when they were demonstrating uh, on land grab. And uh, today Palestinians, uh, every year on the 30th of March, uh, they commemorate this anniversary and they protest all wide world in the Palestinians remember this and the, 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 today's protest is going to uh, continue for six weeks the, the tents uh, on the borders are going going to stay there for more than six weeks until the 15th of May uh, where uh, it's called the Nakba day for the Palestinians mm. or the catastrophe where uh, Palestinians were de demolished and left their houses back in 1948. Palestinians believe they have the right to return to their land and they have to return uh, to their origins and hometowns where now it's called Israel. Mainstream U.S. media has covered the news today in a predictable manner. For example, the New York Times referred to the events as, quote, confrontations. You were there. Were these simply confrontations or clashes, as Western media often says? Well, I said this before, Palestinians were unarmed. Like today, according to the Palestinian Ministry of Health, more than 1,000 Palestinians were injured and 15 Palestinians were killed in one day. This is like it's totally miserable. Like uh, 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 more than 30 Palestinians, including these, um, uh, these uh, injuries, were children and there were a lot of women there. They were using a drone for the first time uh, to throw tear gas canisters on the protesters mm. and demonstrators that were near in the fence. And this is what was something or a well-developed weapon that we witnessed the first time uh, on the border uh, on, on the protests that are held near the fence because we have been covering all the protests uh, since Donald Trump's declaration mm. and how the protesters uh, were protesting against Donald Trump and this weapon was never used. Mm. Uh, they, for, for the first time, they use a drone uh, to, to throw tear gas canisters. They used live ammunition. They mm -hmm. use live ammunition and live rubber bullets on the protesters. We have about 45 seconds left, Hind, but I want to show viewers video which surfaced this week showing Israeli army forces targeting a three-year-old boy in the West Bank city of Hebron for arrest. The images may shock us here in the West, but what does it tell us about the way Israeli uh, military people treat children across Palestine? Well, actually, today uh, I saw like more than 10 Palestinian kids who were injured in their legs, uh, in their heads, in their arms. Uh, actually, Pal uh, the Israeli army doesn't care uh, about the fact that this is a child. What, wh why would they target a child that is only five or six year old? This Pal Palestinian child is actually, I'm sure this child was unarmed and they won't um, uh, have weapons against the Israeli soldiers. We are unfortunately out of time, but again, we really appreciate your reporting. Hind Hodari, thanks so much. Erdogan and Netanyahu exchanged angry remarks after Israeli soldiers killed 15 Palestinians and wounded hundreds more in clashes that erupted during a major demonstration in Gaza on Friday. The Israeli army said its troops targeted only those who attacked them or tried to break through the border fence. Israel's prime minister rejected Erdogan's criticism in a tweet Sunday, citing Turkey's actions against civilians in neighboring regions. The Turkish president responded in a speech. Hey Netanyahu! Hey Netanyahu, you are an occupier, and it is as an occupier that you are in those lands. At the same time, you're a terrorist. Erdogan said Israel's oppression of Palestinians will enter history and that Israeli people are not comfortable about it. 
Egyptian and Jordanian foreign ministers also condemned what they called Israel's aggression against the Palestinians at a conference in Cairo. The international community has to rise to protect Palestinian rights and work towards peace. The two officials called for a renewed effort toward creating a state for the Palestinians. The unjustified violence used by Israel against the Palestinian people is a dangerous sign that we are close to a very difficult time. If we did not all come together in working towards a political horizon, which would place us on the road towards the political solution to this crisis. A group of Israeli and Arab protesters demonstrated in Tel Aviv Sunday for a peaceful solution to the conflict. The demonstration here is a hope, one among many, that eventually will persuade both the government and the public opinion. The defense is important, but peace offensive is much more significant. Gaza's leaders have planned a six-week protest pressing for a right of return for Palestinian refugees and their descendants to their former land in Israel.